Thanks for joining me. I'm Peter Barlas, cardiologist. And today I want to focus on a very simple test we have available when assessing our heart health. And that's called an electrocardiogram. Now you may know this by its acronyms ECG or an EKG. And I want to focus on what it is, how is an electrocardiogram performed, just so you've got a little bit of an idea what's involved, what information can it provide us when examining our heart health, and when may it be useful to have an electrocardiogram performed. So as always, information we do discuss is purely general in nature. So do see your local healthcare professional if you need specific information relevant to your own symptoms or conditions. Now let's begin with an analogy and a question. So what are the similarities between a house and our heart? Well, look, hear me out here, because a house has several pipes running through it, supplying gas and water to the taps. Similarly, the heart has pipes, the coronary arteries, that supply blood and oxygen to the heart muscle. A house has a complex array of cables and wires that supply power to our appliances, to our lights. The heart, equally, has a complex array of cables and wires that run through the muscle to allow it to do what it normally does, to contract, to beat, say at 70 times per minute. So again, there are very much similarities between a home and also our heart, and how our heart needs the nutrients and oxygen from the arteries, but also to contract and to beat, there is elect electrical activity. Now, we need to detect this electrical activity and the ECG is the perfect tool we have to do this. Now, how is an ECG performed? Well, an ECG, as I said, is a recording of the heart's electrical activity from the outside. We often place leads on the chest, the arms, and the legs. And that's done through these little sensors or electrodes that are placed on the skin. Now, we often need to have the skin nice and clean to ensure that there's a good seal and contact between the skin and the electrode and the sensor. There might be a necessity to shave a bit of hair off if there is a bit of hair on the skin. And that just allows us to improve the contact. And we obtain various points of contact around the chest, six main contact points, and also various points in the arms and the legs that provide us a snapshot of electrical activity and the impulses generated by the heart. And looking at different leads gives us an opportunity to get a different view from various angles. Now, there are three main types of ECGs that we usually perform. And one is obviously the resting ECG, whereby you lie on the bed, takes 10 or 15 minutes, and the tracing is uh, obtained and the machine prints out a, a, a tracing that's often uh, reviewed by a doctor. The second is an ECG with these leads that are placed on the chest, but also can stay on for 24 hours, called a 24-hour halter monitor or an ambulatory heart rate monitor. And that allows us to get a more continuous assessment over 24 hours of the electrical activity of the heart. And then finally, we have an ECG that we do do during a stress test. And that is a often a treadmill or ride a bike where we have placed leads on the chest and we can monitor electrical activity by exercising and seeing whether there might be a blockage or a narrowing in one of the arteries of the heart. Now, in simple terms, the ECG takes a picture or a snapshot of activity of the heart. And as I mentioned, the heart has a series of electrical wires running through it. And these originate from a major hub or a network. That, and I like to describe it as a power station. And that's what we call the sinus node. And electricity travels from the sinus node to a substation further low, below called the AV node. And then from there, electricity travels down two bundles of cables known as the left bundle and the right bundle. So again, it's a very complex array, but a very sophisticated uh, manner in which electricity travels from point A to point B to uh, ensure that the heart is contracting properly and regularly. Now, the ECG has a characteristic trace in healthy individuals. And again, you don't need to know too much about it, but just give you an idea when the top part of the heart contracts and the electricity is coming from the sinus node or the power station, we tend to see a little small deflection called the P wave. And as electricity spreads down through the heart muscle, the heart muscle in the bottom part of the heart being quite large and thick, 
gives us a larger deflection of the heart contracting, called the QRS complex. So we look at the P wave, we look at the QRS complexes, and we can determine when the heart and whether the heart is regular or irregular, and whether there might be problems in the way the electricity is traveling from point A to point B. So when will it be useful for you to have an ECG? So an ECG may be useful if there are underlying cardiovascular risk factors. And we've had a separate video on cardiovascular risk factors that I'd encourage you to, to, uh, to watch after this. But there might be a family history of heart disease, or there might be symptoms that you might be experiencing. Now again, one of the most problematic symptoms is one called chest pain. When chest pain happens, an ECG can immediately detect whether there is an emergent problem happening either because of a blockage in an artery or a potential threatened blockage of an artery, and that can be nicely detected on an ECG. But there might be other symptoms, shortness of breath, feeling like you can't catch your breath when you're doing things. There might be irregularities or flutters in the, in the, in, in the chest that you're feeling, or palpitations. There might be problems with underlying kidney function that are causing certain electrolytes or an imbalance of blood chemicals in our body. And we can detect these abnormalities on the ECG. And there are other conditions that affect the lining around the heart that can also give us characteristic changes on an ECG. One of these in particular called pericarditis. We'll have a separate uh, episode on that in the future. So again, I've given you a bit of an overview of what is an ECG, how it's performed, and what information it can provide us. So again, hopefully you found this useful. Until next time, bye for now.